Hi, it's Pastor David here and I'm at a cemetery. Well, why am I at a cemetery? Well, you know, I wanted to come here because I wonder as so many people around me and now sadly, including my mother-in-law have died, uh, what is it that they're known for? And as I look at all these plaques, I actually don't see too many plaques that have a person's list of accomplishments. Um, but what I do see is that over and over again, the word love or how much that person was loved by others or how much they loved. So what for me is standing out actually is our purpose. And what is really important at the end of the day is that we love and are loved by others. You know, Jesus gave us that command to, to love one another. And he said that it's a new command because he wants us to love as he loved. And that's why I love that passage in um, I can't remember where it is exactly it might be Romans but where it talks about how the Holy Spirit by God has poured his love into our hearts it's God's love and so as God's love is poured into us we are able to love others sadly I think actually a lot of um, knowledge actually can get in the way of this such important word because we are so driven to actually do we're so driven by knowledge and knowing uh, we can actually do this all our lives and we do through school and university and work training and actually we can bring that knowledge into church life and that's important the knowledge of God and understanding God and who he is but obviously what's more important is love and how we love one another because as we love one another the world will know that we are disciples of Jesus Christ if we look at 1 Corinthians chapter 8, it says here how easily we get puffed up over our opinions. But love builds up the structure of our new life. If anyone thinks of himself or herself as a know-it-all, he or she still has a lot to learn. But if a person passionately loves God, he or she will possess the knowledge of God. So it's that passionate pursuit of loving God that's so important to our Christian lives and I'd like us just to briefly look at 2nd Corinthians chapter 5 also and verse 14 for it is Christ's love that fuels our passion and motivates us because we are absolutely convinced that he has given his life for all of us this means all died with him in his crucifixion so that those who live should no longer live self-absorbed lives but lives that are poured out for him the one who died for us and now lives again how good is that the promise that we don't live these self-absorbed lives anymore but we live lives that are passionately fueled by Christ's love and motivated by Christ's love for others you know, a death is very sad and Christ's death was incredibly sad, but we rejoice because Christ conquered death and has given us life. And in first, 2 Corinthians 5, we see this for ourselves and I see this for my mother-in-law. We are convinced that even if these bodies we live in are folded up at death like tents, we will still have a God-built home that no human hands have built, which will last forever in the heavenly realm. That's a great promise. And so today, let us give thanks for what Christ has done in coming, the eternal God becoming death for us so that we may have life in him. May you eat now the bread broken for you and may you drink now the cup given to you for life.